All of that maneuvering on the world stage, driven by the fierce military advance that's happening right now in Ukraine. And David Common is here with a big picture view of the invasion. David. Yeah, Ian, let's talk about how the Russians got to Kyiv so quickly. And in many ways, that story starts in Belarus, Ukraine's northern neighbor and a key Russian ally. You see it here. They allowed Russia to mass troops in Belarus and then cross into Ukraine. And from that border, it's just 150 kilometers to the capital. Fastest route, good highway. The Ukrainians did try to slow them down. They claim blowing up a bridge at Ivan Kiv. Bitter fighting as well at the strategic Hostomel Airport, northwest of the capital. It has a long runway where heavy Russian transport planes could bring in thousands of soldiers, and it's just seven kilometers from the city. Now, Ukraine has responded, putting National Guard soldiers into the streets of Kyiv, including at choke points, places like bridges. Every man, 18 to 60, now being asked to help, machine guns even being handed out. So where, you might ask, is the rest of their army? Let us go to Luhansk and Donetsk. Now, those are the disputed regions in the east. The bulk of the Ukrainian forces were here when all this started, and they were met by Russians pouring over their border. But now there's another potential front. The Pentagon is claiming that Russia landed amphibious infantry down at Mariupol, allowing them to race north and potentially flank the Ukrainian force. That could cut off resupply or retreat. So what happens now? Well, it's symbolic, but I want to talk about tiny snake island in the Black Sea. You see it there. Ukraine says it had 13 soldiers there guarding it. A Russian warship showed up, ordered them to surrender. They got on the radio and responded with, go blank yourself. And so the Russian ship began a bombardment, according to the Ukrainians, and Ian, all 13 of those soldiers on that island killed. All right, David, thank you.